Anyway, uh, what happened? It's what happened? Oh, I went to see I went to see Ajahn Mahabhu again, of course, uh, to tell him what was going on. Went to see uh, went to see some Dat Nanata Mohan and leave him some of the brochures. Uh, Ajahn Chah took charge of all all the all of the brochures. You know, I know, and he would if he was going to approve this, then he would. I th- I was convinced he would actually start to influence the the people who might really help but of course because of the the con- the contention the difficulty and the complaints about what had been going on he couldn't agree uh or to 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 say it was okay and and and, and to um and to give it any backing so he, he he had to come again. So that's what he did, and of course, it, when he came, um, he, he arrived saying to Jan uh, "I've come to take you home." <laughs> I, I I think I'm not sure, so, and uh, so he knew. I mean, actually, Char was in complete in complete charge. You know, either either it was. He, he, he was going to approve it, or the whole thing was over. And um, so I drove him down uh, to see Chithurst House, and uh, drove him through the woods, brought him to the house. He went, saw everything, didn't say anything. And then at the end of it, uh, uh, he apparently said, in, he just said in Thai, I don't know what the phrase is, but it means it's good enough. And uh, that was fantastic, of course. I, you know, a marvelous load off so once he'd said that once he'd come to that uh, conclusion then he asked Gachin Samadhi if Samadhi wanted to stay and that he agreed that he'd going to have a bash at it and uh, Samadhi said yes so then it was over and uh, he stayed and it, and um, started telling people that this was worth supporting and Again, lots of more money came in, and he decided to go to the states and have a holiday, and and go down Wall Street and street and uh, in a limo and smoke cool. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's that, that was more or less it. And then, then of course, you know, th- then you now what you do is you get out the photo albums and you see what then. Uh, ensued, which was truly astonishing uh, to me, because um, uh, people were coming from all over the place. They were coming from Europe. They were coming from America. People were putting tents up, um, wanting to help, um, and uh, th- it was marvelous. And uh, uh, you know, the, the most dramatic thing I was that this, uh, some Thai gentleman, I think he lived in Hampstead, I can't remember his name, um, he came and inquired how many tiles that was wanted for the roof, uh, was given a sample and told 45,000, and, um, and lorries arrived subsequently with all the tiles uh, on these lorries, which of course we had no, couldn't use because there was a lot of work to be done before we could get the tiles on. But it was that kind of response, and um, and then because we needed operating cash, I called Jeffrey Beardsley, who uh, was responsible for a trust, uh, essentially to to, to uh, provide for Ajahn Panyuado, who was in, in Bantard, and I knew that he owned they owned some property, and um, it wasn't doing anything; it was grazing land. So I said, how about you selling that grazing land um, and buying uh, the, the pastures around Chitter's house? And uh, so I said, uh, he said, how much do you want for them? And I said, 25,000 pounds. So, yeah, so anyway, he rang me back and said he could get 25,000 quid for the property in, in Devon for the land in Devon, and he, he would agree, and he'd got the agreement of Paniwado to, to, to do it. So we got 25,000 quid in cash to, to keep going with, and, um, and without having to borrow any money, because you have to remember, up to this point, we hadn't borrowed money. 
Hoffman, that seemed to me to be rather important. And also, uh, what was part of the policy, Ajahn Sumedho's policy at that time, which I thought was brilliant, was that uh, well, wh when money came in or pe people offered things, then that's what we do with it. And we, w our policy was to be broke. And um, that's essentially how we functioned, you know, not saving, not hedging our bets, not just really, you know, going out on a limb. And that was his policy. I, I suppose it's from a charity, uh, uh, you know, the trustee of a charity's point of view, it would, might seem a bit, um, a bit irresponsible. But nonetheless, but you see, we'd already had this run-in with the charity commissioners because Terry, Sh uh, Terry Shide's complaint, had al he'd also gone to charity commissioners to complain. And of course, the charity commissioners are legally bound. Even one complaint from the public, they have to take action. And of course, I was, you know, I was taken by the, by the collar and, um, and hauled before the commissioner. And I went with uh, Jen Smedo to see the, one of the commissioners, and he said it's very serious complaint that what you've done is you you used the, f the, the most of the amount of money, mo the assets of this trust, in buying property that you didn't have surveyed. You you it, uh, you didn't have ind have it independently surveyed or valued. And is that so? Or is it not? And I said yes, it's so. Yeah, of course it is. And um, they said, well, that's, that's, you know, as a trustee, that's, uh, how, can you, how can you justify that? You know, that's, that's uh, serious. And I said, well, uh, the point is, the deal was the place was derelict. Why do I need a second opinion? <laughs> and, <laughs> And because, uh, you know, another penny costs money. We haven't got any money. <laughs> and, um, uh, and I said, that, and the other point, the point is this, that I wouldn't have done it if I didn't think that Venerable Semedo wanted to do this. I wouldn't have done it against his wishes. And I said, you are Sir Venerable Semedo. This venture is for him and the Order of Monks. You ask him whether th he thinks we should have done it or not. So he did. <laughs> they said, yes, I agree. I agreed with him at the time. And then, uh, and so, and then I said, uh, uh, oh, it was great, actually, because you know when the things are that clear, and you said, and I said to, to the commissioner, look, this is a charity. This is dedicated to religious purposes. And the, uh, it is, its objects are religious. This involves faith. And if a, such a charity can't make an act of faith, mm -hmm. who can? You know? <laughs> and he gave up. <laughs> he actually smiled and gave up. And, uh, well, he, it's kind of stuff you can put in a report, you know. And he knew that he could put it that in a report and, uh, and, and they'd say, yeah, I can see how what you can't you can't nail them, can you? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, um, oh, I'll tell you this little just a little anecdote about about the the Buddha Rupa in the shrine room, which weighs I can tell you 800 kilograms, and um, uh, I can't remember the date of this. You were already in the place, you know. People who've got masks on and killing, killing, uh, <laughs> uh, killing uh, dry rot blooms in the basement, <laughs> and and um, it was a, that sort of period. And I got a phone call from the privileged division of customs and excise. Excise. Uh, uh, are you are you Mr. Sharp, George Sharp, chairman of the English Secretary? Yes, I am. Well, he said, Mr. Sharp, we've got a We've got a large piece of, um, well, it's a Buddha, actually. <laughs> and it looks like it's solid gold. <laughs> and it's got your name on it. <laughs> so, 
saying, I said, well, no, no papers. <laughs> he said, no, no papers. And I said, how do you get here? He said, on Thai Airways. He said, probably first class. Uh, and um, I said, well, what, what, what have you done with it? He said, well, we put it in the, in the strong room of Air Canada. And uh, so, so he said, that, well, he said, you have to explain this, Mr. Sharp. It, um, it, one, it's a religious thing. What's it? And, and it's emerged from Thailand. And it has no papers. And two, um, you don't have an import license. Uh, I have no indication whatsoever where it's going, whether it's going to be sold or not sold and so on. And um, I can't release it until this all is tentative. So um, so, um, I I didn't want to do it. So I rang the Thai embassy and told them the story of the the Buddha and... uh, and in about an hour or so later, this lady rang me, and I don't know what her name was. I believe that she was part of a family who, who whose fortune was based in toothpaste or something like that. <laughs> and um, and they decided to send this to, to for for the monastery Chithurst. She arrived, uh, very worried, and, and with all these forms, and sat down and filled them out. And I, you know, and I signed it, and I gave him a, the the I gave him the the um, assurance on the phone that you know it was it was actually not for the resale and uh, so he was very happy with that. Anyway, uh, get, getting it here was heroic. I mean, I'm, I was terribly impressed by all that. Then, much of that you know, of course, uh, the the, uh, the the way that the trust functioned. That is to say, three because three lay directors worked very well with. We, it, we never had any problems with that, and and everybody knew where the decisions were made, and that 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 this was sangha decisions. It wasn't, you know, just a group of lay people or me or something like. That. These were actually sangha decisions, and uh, and so any antipathies towards the idea of the English, English sangha trust, which actually uh, in the country broadly because of past experience. There was a lot of antipathy towards the trust, and it didn't have a very good reputation. So, um, the approval, the, the fact that Ajahn Mado was the president, and the, and the two other bhikkhus, which were Anando and Viridhammo, were very senior, and that Ajahn Chad approved it, BST began to take on some credibility and, and approval broadly. Um, and then, because the, the 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 fact that the number of people who may reside here is limited to thirty at any one time, and that uh, we were also limited to only, I think, five uh, gatherings of, of any size every year, festival days, I think they're called. Uh, that put a, a limit on something which uh, Ajahn Sumedho, uh had envisioned, which I didn't really know about until that time, uh, which made this already too small. So then he began to start talking before, what, well before this was, you know, this place was finished or, or even, you know, fully functional uh, in my view he was then talking about having another centre and this was principally going to be for the benefit of the laity and um, and the, the sort of views he outlined to me about what he wanted to do more or less coincide with what he's achieved at Amravati um, and I have to say, I, I didn't agree with that. I, I, I thought it was... Um, I couldn't understand why he would want to do it and said to him, I, why would you want to make your life a misery, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, and why, why, why would you like to, you know, have, go, have all this trouble? And um, w- when, in fact, you know, the money's coming in, you can make Chithurst into something truly wonderful, you know? And a, 
uh, idyllic place to be. But um, no, he, 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 said he made up his mind that this is what he wanted to dedicate himself to uh, as a sort of... Um, well, I, I suggest, I, I said I thought it was a doing, you know, like an achancha, really. Uh, this openness, this generosity, this this uh, um, tremendous um, uh, compassion, which uh, uh, cut through all the fact, that, you know, uh, whether it was going to make him miserable or or, or or be a burden or whatever, he didn't care, you know. And effectively, that's what he decided to do. And um, once I, I, I was satisfied once I, once I knew that that uh, he was prepared to do that, and I did believe him, and I thought he would do that. So then, when Peter, Peter, Peter and Barbara, name Peter, Jackson, Jackson they rang me. Peter rang me, and Peter, of course, is a surveyor, big time company and um, and they'd found uh, this residential school and um, and I, I should go look at it and it was wonderfully positioned you know you've got the rail M1 uh, uh, and it's also an area about sending natural bridge at the same time and it's only sort of 45 minutes 45 minutes to an hour away in other words and strategically it's to the north and then Chittas to the south and about the same distance from from central London so you know strategically it was ideal and then when I saw it well because it looked like an army camp but um, it it had got all the basics structure and the buildings weren't bad most of them um, it was likely to be cold in the summer, in, in the winter, because the, the the reason why the health service and why the uh, Bedford County Council wanted to sell it, it was, amongst other things, it cost forty five thousand a year to heat the place, <laughs> and and uh, not surprising really, because most of the pipes ran under the ground and they weren't lagged, so they were spending all this money on heating soil, <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, <coughs> Well, we'd only, uh, we'd only been walking around it half an hour, and I said, I, if this is what you want to do, this is the place, you know. And I uh, can't really think anything better. So it was then a question of, of, of asking Peter Jackson to put a, an offer together uh, for the council that made sense, because, it, because you can imagine the planning restrictions of, of, a, of a residential school uh, in an area of outstanding natural beauty, what else can you use it for? You know? What would the council allow you to use it for? Uh, and the answer to that would be very li very few things that would they allow. And um, so that meant that it would depress the value of the property considerably. And, um, and uh, there was unlikely to be very few people, there was likely to be very few people who would actually have a use for it. And so our offer of, of a monastery, monastic college we call it, because that, would, that was close to the idea of school, and um, was pretty close. And Peter put this wonderful proposal together, sort of graded proposal, um, which more or less compelled the council to agree to sell us all of it, because in, initially they didn't want to sell all of it. They wanted to keep back, big bits of it back. But anyway, it was it, and it was cheap enough, 200,000 quid uh, for 37 acres and 50,000 square feet of, of, spe of uh, covered space. And then uh, they made, we had to wait for a year because... Um, because... The, the legal technicalities of actually getting rid of it uh, from their part because it, it had to go to Downing and it had to go to whether to actually Whitehall in order to get the approval for it to be released by the health service in and and that took about a year in the meantime the the council had changed to become a, a, a led by the um, led by a different color of uh, politician and um, 
and and they what they wanted to actually what they did was to gazump us and say oh, I'm sorry it's not enough money and um so it looked very bad for for a while and um so in the end I rang the chief executive of Bedfordshire Council and I just said to him look uh, who's have you got authority to do a deal with me on the phone and he said frankly no and I said who has and the, he said the chairman of the planning committee so I, he gave me his personal number and I called him and I said look it's a year now and now you're asking for more money and um and you know you are dealing with a charity here um uh, can I do a deal with you on the phone here and now have you got the authority so he said I have actually I can do it uh, under chairman's privilege so I said okay fine so uh <coughs> so I said I said oh, well how much do you want he said make me an offer <laughs> <laughs> so I said okay 220,000 quid and not a penny more right and he said, that's okay, I can get that through. And uh, so it was done. It was a political thing. He just wanted to look good. And it, you know, and it cost 20,000 quid. And um, so that was fine. And, and, and then you know what happened, because, in fact, I think what Ajahn Sumedha had, 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 had set in train is something that the Thai people wanted, which was something that they could see because of the int the original intention was that there would be that temple, that large temple. We put out uh, we put out drawings of our ideas, uh, which Thai people saw, and they looked, at, you know, they liked it very much. And so, and from and Ajahn Sumedho was there, so it began to get terrific support. And. Um, and the Thai people really wanted it to take off, and, and, and he was right. And um, the, the the local council, the people that eventually we had to fight to get the temple, um, when they they actually saw one of these brochures, the, the original brochures, you know, where after we'd bought it, and and one of the chief planning officers rang me up and said, "What do you mean by publishing this drawing?" You know. Uh, of, of all this, all this planning, you know, all this things you're going to do on the side. So I said, well, I haven't, you know, we haven't applied for planning consent. He said, I know, that's why I'm calling you. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, well, look, you know, this is just, a, this is just a vision, you know. I it said, uh, you know, it's that's all it is. It's a, it's an idea. <laughs> 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 so is it against the law? <laughs> well, well, no. <laughs> and, and I said, well, that's all it is. I promise you. It's, it's. I tell you, you know, eventually we'll come to you for a temple. Of course we will, because I've already put that in writing. And uh, so you know that. But how it will look, we're not sure about. So we just have to wait. But um, they were scared right away, you know. And um, and so I wasn't. It was surprising that we had to go to. To. Um, the Secretary of State to get it through. But the idea was to, to give some form to w what uh, Ajahn Smeda clearly had a very, gra a very grand vision, a really big one. And um, and you see what, I mean, it's already uh, taking that form. I, it, it, can't, it can't not eventually take the sort of general form that he envisioned in the first place and the f that all that money going in that direction of course it's tended to slow down the development of Chithurst because you know you, the the um, Dhamma Hall project and the nice uh, cloisters the, the idea of the cloisters around the garden is wonderful but, but it'll come yeah. it'll come well, it's more or less up to date, and I've left an awful lot out. Thank you very much for listening. <laughs>